everyone and welcome back to Zoo Crafting! We are here for a special side quest! And I was thinking, Siri, there's so much to do in the zoo! What should you do today? And I was thinking, you know what? We have not visited our safari zone and we haven't finished up that river for the lions in ages! And so I decided we're gonna come over here and spend a little bit of time visiting the safari zone and seeing all of our lions and seeing all of the interns here so that we can see how much work there is to do. I am just so excited. I thought it would be fun to check on the ostriches and the zebra that we transferred over here and to just build up the lion river. And the lions are so active today, you guys. Oh my goodness. You guys have no idea. Oh my gosh, they're just like moving and grooving and roaming around. See, normally they'll just stand in place, but it looks kind of like uh, the females seem to be clustering around one particular male lately. So he might indeed be considered the alpha male. I'm going to keep an eye on that. We might have a rival little pride starting up down here. But she doesn't seem too interested in him. In fact, she seems to be paying more attention to the fact that there is a cave inside our lion exhibit. Hello, ma'am. Who are you? It's Nala. Nala, and who is she following? Valka. So Nala and Valka are following each other around. There is a little cave inside of Pride Rock in here where the lions can come in and we're going to be adding in like hay and twigs and like old bone piles. I'm going to put old bone piles in the floor for uh, any kills that they've dragged back in. But this is also where I assume they would occasionally bring some young. Lions aren't denning animals. They just kind of, they're out in the middle of the savanna. They're just going to have their cubs out there. And the females will help take care of the cubs and the pride. And the males, normally there's just one male. And he rules over his pride. So having so many males inside of this exhibit is a little unrealistic. But we're just going to roll with it. Alright, let's climb up to the top. Oh, oh I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry. Valka, I'm so glad you won't attack me right now. I'm going to put on the rest of my armor just in case so that I am undercover right now as a leaf so my lions won't try to eat me. Oh, mm, delicious, delicious blueberry muffins. But for those of you guys who have not seen our safari zone, this is the lion exhibit in the safari zone, complete with the beginning of their little lion river, which we're going to work on today, and Pride Rock, which looks freaking awesome! I'm so proud of the work I did on Pride Rock just to get it all laid out and then we had to go and collect the red rock. Oh look at it. Look at it. It's awesome! And I'm trying to think of ways to make it even more awesome. I think we need to add more acacia trees kind of around here and we're gonna add that river. The river's not gonna come through here even though I thought that would be pretty cool. We might have it like bump up against here and then continue on the other side. So we might have the river actually like go under the rock. Oh hello Volka! Goodness, I'll give him a little bit of personal space. And we also have some amazing, amazing interns. So this is Riona, and she's pretty cool. She helps to monitor the river help for what goes on inside the river. Ooh, and we can get some bone piles from her. We might have to do that. I'm going to try to like get some water and give her some water. And that'll, oh, I love these. See, this is what we're, we do for decorating the exhibits to add enrichment for our animals. This is red rock and some desert grass and bromeliads. And that is what I have brought with us today is a lot of the decorative pieces. And somewhere in here, ah, there's the red rock. I knew I had it laying around somewhere. Anything else? Hmm, no, not really. Okay, where's mole fingers? Mole fingers. And I think I need, yeah, a normal shovel. But today, uh, rather than get distracted by the many, many ways we could perk up the Savannah exhibit, though I want your guys' help, okay? So, here's the Savannah exhibit. I'm thinking more acacia trees. I'm thinking we need more. Uh, I'll compare this exhibit. I think we also need more Savannah grass, the barley grass that we use as Savannah grass, because this is the ostrich slash... <laughs> Zebra slash everything. This is the multi-species exhibit that we have going on in here. And you can see this is what it looks like. The ostriches are swimming around in their water. Uh, there's a lot more trees. The grass is just a lot thicker. I think it's really nice. It's cleared up in some areas so that we have like feeding stations for the elephants and watering stations for the elephants. Big old troughs, troughs even. 
And then, you know, for the elephants, we have this painting area where they can come and be enriched through painting. And that is something that you can train elephants to do, but they also will kind of pick up if you teach them that it's a way for expression. So this is an optional area for our elephants to come and enjoy. PJ actually runs the place. Oh, PJ, I forgot how you accept dyes. Oh, and he loves cheesecake. <laughs> so we might come here and we might speak with PJ so we can get some paintings from our elephants. We're actually going to eventually build an elephant museum uh, or a museum where we display their art so I'm pretty excited about that here's some of our zebras but you see they've just got a nice big giant area we're gonna actually pretty much I would say make this five ten oh there's a little mouse see there's little mice that we keep a healthy ecosystem running around but I would say we're probably gonna make this exhibit five to six times as big, not even joking. Taking up huge swaths of area that way, that way, working around the Komodo dragon exhibit because we don't wanna mess with it since Kaffers, that was one of her last builds before she became a full-time teacher. Oh, we have more ostrich babies hatching. Uh, as long as you guys can keep a bit of a control on your population management, please. But yes, yeah, so we're going to basically expand this. Uh, oh, great. There's more, more eggs hatching. Expand this into a huge exhibit. And we're going to have lots of enrichment areas. And we're going to put in a Jeep tour so that people can ride a little Jeep tour. There's the little mouse. Can ride a Jeep tour and look at all of the animals inside the safari zone. So that's this side. And I just feel like the, the lion's enclosure is kind of plain right now. So any ideas for adding things to the lion enclosure? Mammoth, oh look, it's a baby ostrich. Oh my goodness, look at you little one. Aren't you a cutie patootie? But any ideas for things we could add into the lion enclosure is much appreciated. For now, we're at least going to get started at expanding their little river. Like over here, it just feels like there's so much untouched potential right there. Ooh, and that's like one of the first things that people see when they come into the, the safari zone and head towards the food court, one of the first food courts, is this spot. And I just, ah, I just really want to deck it out and do the lions justice. So we've got to figure out what to do. Whoops, lots of, lots of people talking at me. Let's see. William, did you know that only the female lions hunt? The males stay behind and eat when they've made the kill. Did you know that the lion has a bite force of around 600 pounds per square inch? Yes, William, thank you. This is also why I stay, uh, I stay decked out as a leaf. I am camouflaged. I am currently a leaf, uh, not a person, so that they won't, they won't decide to nibble. All right. Lions are pretty lazy though. They can spend up to, well, lazy in quotations. They can spend up to a good 20 hours a day just napping. Oh, you know what I was thinking about adding now that I remember is actually termite mounds. I have read a really cool study uh, recently published by Science Daily. Like, well, it's published by someone else. Science Daily did an article about it. Um, about how termite mounds actually help to keep the the ecosystems in desertish areas or areas that are struggling with uh, like desert desert desertification. That means areas that are becoming desert-like. Uh, the climate's just changing. They don't have as much water as previous years. It's starting to get really like not looking so good for that one area. Well. One of the ways that that is uh, handled, one of the ways that the savanna and safari and uh, semi-arid desert lands, semi-arid means somewhere that's pretty dry a lot of the time, have started to handle and cope with that, or they have always coped with it, I should say, is that termite mounds, which are very humid inside, and they're huge! Termite mounds can be gigantic, taller than me, huge, like 10 feet tall. They're, they're gigantic, but termite mounds, actually help to retain a lot of humidity and moisture and they act as sort of like water um, water stations because they'll, they'll have all the the holes that the termites will make in the dirt when they are expanding their mound and making it gigantic all of those holes make it easier for water to go down into the little tunnels that the termites make so it ends up becoming like a catch place for water and water will be under the termite mound and that'll protect all the little plants in a good radius around the termite mound even if they're teensy tiny 
tiny little grass plants that you can hardly see and you wouldn't look at it and think it was holding back the desert. Those grass plants with their complex root systems actually do a very important job of retaining the soil and keeping it from blowing away and becoming a desert. So termite mounds is something we would definitely decorate with uh, because it's very important. You know what I just realized? I don't have any sand, so we might replace some of this with sand in the future. But for now, I think we'll make it like a too deep in some areas river. I kind of want it to be a big river, but we need to make it so that if the lions get in, they can get back out. So we'll leave some areas to have like a little ledge. All right. Oh, this feels so wonderful. See, if you just focus, Siri, focus for like two minutes, you can get stuff done. Let's climb up on top of Pride Rock because I, I actually don't know where I want the river to go from there. Oh, no. Uh-oh. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. The server had a hiccup. No, no. I had my whole, my whole little path I carved out. Oh, well. So let's climb back up to the top and then we will figure out where I'm sending this little river because I actually didn't think that far ahead. It's been so long since we've come come here to to the spot so we'll make the little river carved out there and then actually I kind of I kind of want to like swing it like this and then curve it like that and go down so we might make like some natural bridges over the river with uh what is that oh that's a flower I was like how did a wolf get inside of my lion exhibit oh my gosh <laughs> Riona I almost took out my sword and just started viciously attacking you because I thought she was like some sort of mob. Ugh, I do need to find a way to light this place up. Ooh, hiccups. To light this place up a little bit better in some areas. But for now, I am working on the little river. So I, I think I kind of want to swing the river like this in an S shape. I'm partial to S's since my name begins with S. All right, let's see. We're going to grab our little, we don't want to break the barley. <laughs> because the barley we have to buy or find another barley field. It does not, it does not like, oops, what's this? Hmm, I don't think the river is big enough to support fish right now, but I'd love to make it healthy enough for fish one day. Having a variety of plants gives our lions lots of enrichment, so it's very important. I agree with both of you ladies, and I am working on it, trust me. Oh, there's some more precious barley come to me. There we go, see, and we can actually take all of this barley and then we can run like over here where I know the river is not going to go and just start going nuts putting it down. Doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Nola, are you trying to eat something out there? I don't see anything, but I trust your ears. She's like, I smell it. I smell the zombies. Let me eat them. Don't worry, Nala. If a zombie should be unfortunate enough to wander into my lion exhibit, oh, maybe it's that little chicken. Chicken, stop teasing Nala. That's so silly. It's a teasing chicken. Oh, I just heard a cat too. <laughs> so there must be a cat hiding around in the barley. See, it doesn't, uh, that's a stack and a half of barley that we just collected to prepare for, oh, that chicken. That, this right here, you guys, is the epitome of playing chicken. Playing chicken, where you, you risk your life, Mr. Chicken, just so you can you can try to be a daredevil. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's right. We still have to name a new lion, Yuka. I believe we have a whole bunch of lions in our safari nuts that I need to bring over here anyway. We might have to expand the lion exhibit. We might have multiple lion prides. All right. And now we're going to go like this. And we're going to make our little S, a little curve. Hmm. Maybe a bit further out. There. And make our little curve this way. Nala. I think Nala is like one of the more uh, outgoing. That's the word I'm looking for. One of the more outgoing of the lions for our lion pride. There we go. Have you guys ever seen lions in real life? I have because I, I frequent zoos and conservation areas. And I think they're pretty darn awesome. I mean, I think every animal is pretty darn awesome, but there's something about a lion where you have a little bit of humility when you're standing in front of it and you're like, well, okay, this is one big old cat. Oh my gosh, I have no twigs to continue building my little, my little river. What? Oh no. Oh no. This is what I get for not coming prepared. Stop playing chicken, chicken. That's like a very bad idea, chicken. 
All right, well, let's go inside, and I guess we can check inside of my chest in our little house. Did Calf do that? Calf did a lot of things. <laughs> Pretty much, like, if he finds a random plant, he knows who did it. It was Siri. And if I find, like, random stuff, I know who did it. It was Calf. Oh, holy days! We've got a lot of silver skeleton swords in here. Somehow I forget that every time. Do we have... Oh, good. We got a little crafting bench. Oh, sweet. We have a lot of stuff. <laughs> Glistening melons. My goodness. Um, okay. Hey, there we go. Don't mind if I do, just make a new little iron shovel. Wow, look at all the name tags. Ooh, cattails, I'm taking those. And the meadowgrass foxtails, taking those. But we'll do a little bit more excavating. Uh, it's almost daytime, I won't sleep. We'll do a little bit more excavating on the river. It's kind of amazing how slow progress goes sometimes, but that's why I am here. Oh, fudge knuckles. Really? Why? Dude, I was just in there. Why do you have to come down? Oh, and you're a fire werewolf, no less. Go away. It's kind of it's kind of nice watching them watch the rising sun. Let's see if how close I can get. Uh, I'm just gonna watch him for a minute. Look at that. Look at that rude dude. Oh, do you see us? No, not yet. He should change back in a second anyway. So I'm just gonna <laughs> gently peck at my river, and then let's see. Yeah, I want it to curve this way. That's what I want. Nice little curve right here. You can just change back, sir. Yes, Freya, it is nice to take a moment to rest in the shade when you don't have to worry about werewolves. The sun's rising, though, so he should be turning back into a human in a second. And then I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do with him. <laughs> but for now, at least we're figuring out... Oh, come on, dude. Be polite. Change back into a human. There he goes. Okay. We're safe now. I'm just going to ignore him for a while. There. See? And now we're curving our little river. I'm excited for being able to get fish in this river. So we can just come and we can watch the fish swim. All right. Let's turn this. But yes, so you guys know about lions and lion prides, I assume. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I should see lots and lots of random facts about lions in our comment section now. Don't be shy. Don't be shy, you guys. That's part of this. We're learning about the world together, the natural world together. So let me know what you know about lions. Impress me. Knock my socks off. We already know about their bite force. We already know that males, uh, usually they guard their pride. So they're, they, <laughs> and don't think that means that like the females are very submissive to them because the females will beat the crap out of them. And the female pride, if they don't like their male, will chase him away and they will be like mm, no you're not you're not gonna be our kittens daddy anymore you're out of here now the male will uh, a new male who comes into a territory where an old male got chased out just like with oh I'm really hungry just like <laughs> Nala she's like what are you doing you're changing my environment quite a bit don't worry Nala I'm just making you a really nice little river but a new male who comes into a territory um, will sometimes kill the, the cubs of the previous male so that he can ensure that his genetics, that's not what they're thinking, it's just instinct, but so he can ensure that his genetics are the ones that carry on. And that, I used to think that was so vicious and so like cruel, but it's just kind of the way the animal world works, you know what I mean? And then I learned that zebras do the same thing, and holy days is it violent. Whoa! It's not doing hiccup server. But yeah, zebras will actually do the same thing, where a male who will take over a new herd will, like, take out any of the, the foals uh, who are born <laughs> so that he can ensure... Th oh, who's taking a bath? Let's see who's taking a bath. Who's this? It's Kovu! So Kovu's taking a bath. There we go. All right, so that he can ensure that his genetics are the ones that carry on. And I, like I said, sometimes that sounds really violent and sad, but it's the animal world. And you have to kind of draw lines to make sure that you're not putting human... Ah, oh, dang it. Ah, one second, guys. Grrr. Grrr. Well, I guess we're not going to get too much more done in, in here today because the server's just having some hiccups. 
that's okay server i know you're all the way in the uk and i'm all the way on north carolina in the u.s so sometimes no matter what we want to do the two of us just can't find a way to make it work out but like i was saying it may sound really sad when you hear about those kinds of things uh in the wild or with animals or with anything and it's okay to kind of go oh that's really tragic but don't project uh the human mentality too much onto animals just you have to respect them for what they are i find let's just oh my gosh look guys i still have potatoes in my inventory <laughs> from all of those potatoes but that was the most amazing thing if you guys have ever read or the book not the movie but the book um cloudy with a chance of meatballs then it is one of my favorite all-time favorite books as a child and i loved it i thought it was so just a beautiful creative world so it was amazing when potatoes started raining from our sky because it reminded me of that story from my childhood all right and i'm gonna put the barley down See, I think we just need to put down like a, a ton more little rock boulder things um, and a ton more other stuff. What are you doing, Kovu? Are you going to bathe again? I can't believe you just jumped in the water a second ago. That was really cool. All right, let's go ahead and do this. Oh, look at him, Kovu. He's taking a little bath. Well, that's pretty awesome. All right, then I'm just going to come over here and we're going to start filling this little river up as best I can there we go all right slowly but surely I'll probably actually do this uh, on my own maybe because this is not the <laughs> this is this is what it takes you have to do one layer and then another layer and you can do it a little bit faster sometimes but it's just easiest and safest okay can, can I get it from here yes to collect the water there we go but yeah, and I've watched lions um, in a lot of documentaries, and, you know, I, I enjoy studying them. They're probably, they're, they're probably one of the most iconic of the big cats, and part of that is because they are truly large. They are, they are some big ones, and they're so diverse. The more I learn about, like, individual personalities and histories of lions that have been, say, owned by people or the subject of certain study and biology for decades, the more I realize that they're a very intelligent creature. And I, I think that about a lot of animals, but especially lions. There just seems to be, like, a little bit more than just instinct and teeth going on in there. So I really encourage you guys, look up some stories about individual lions who have been studied uh, for like generations. The stories can be really inspiring too because the savanna is kind of a tough place to live. You're sort of you're sort of fighting for your survival most of the time. All right. The safari grasses are actually very important for the health of the exhibit. Without the complex root networks, a heavy rain could wash away all this dirt. And that's so true. Also termite mounds. I think I might add some more termite mounds. Oh my gosh, you guys. So this is this is a nice slow, nice slow adding of water. Uh, it's kind of relaxing, but it does take a while. So I'm going to finish with the water and then we will enjoy putting down. In fact, let me think. We have dug out the river, so let's appreciate our river from above. Hello, sir. I might have to remove that gentleman before nighttime, too. Oh, hey! Who's being king of Pride Rock? It's Kovu again! Oh, I'm thinking that he's really, he's really making his mark. Oh, wow! Look at the river from above! This is going to be awesome. I needed to curve it a little more sharply. Lion River may be small now. That's right, Riona. I'm going to expand this river. You have no idea. So I think I'll have it, like, maybe I'll have it become, like, a waterfall right there? Maybe somehow? Question mark? And then we'll, like, have it pour down that way, maybe curve off into the distance and go into where we might have, uh, like, the, the, bone, the bone thing, the hyena bone thing from Lion King. So we're going to rebuild that later, too. But all right, guys, I'm going to put all of the stuff I brought to plant and to build more in here. Oh, look at Kovu. He's, he's taking a bath again. That's awesome. Into our little chest where that chicken was playing chicken with our lions. And we will work more on this next time. Feel free to leave more lion names. I like this chicken, too. I'm going to catch this chicken. 
I'm gonna name him Lion. Uh, Lion Chicken? What do you think about that? Uh, what do you think about Little Lion? Yeah, Little Lion? You like that? I'm gonna name him Little Lion and I'm gonna keep him with me because I, I like his spunk. I like his spunk. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take Little Lion home with me and I'm gonna put all of our decorative gear and flora away so in this chest so that we can continue to work on this exhibit when we come back and we'll come back here maybe for another side quest or maybe pretty soon don't worry william i will be back he's like you're leaving already and there's a lot of stuff to do in our world william i have i have promised bamboo i am going to be working on bamboo so we'll be back here to finish decorating some more but i hope you guys are having an absolutely wonderful day and like i said let me know what you know about lions let me know what you want to know about lions and we will finish up Lion River and continue adding to their exhibit next time. So I'm going to take Little Lion with me and I will see you guys later. Bye bye!